Aloha, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to another week of Trauma Recovery University. I am your host, Athena Moberg, and with us in the green room, of course, is Bobby Parrish, my esteemed colleague, and your awesome co-host. I just want to say a really quick thank you to every one of you that show up early every week and hang out on the Twitter feed and interact with one another and encourage one another, and you encourage us. The fact that you are so fully engaged and so committed to your recovery journey and so involved in this community, I can't even express to you in words how much it just blesses us and encourages us and, and fuels us to want to keep on going. Uh, so as I said before, I'm Athena Moberg. I am an adult survivor of childhood sexual abuse and sexual exploitation during childhood. Uh, my business partner is also a survivor. We show up here every single week to answer your questions about the recovery journey involved in child abuse. From the time you get ab abused during childhood all the way through to your adult years, how does that affect you? Is it just something that happens when you're a child or how does that affect us all the way into adulthood? in many, many ways. Not only um, unhealthy coping strategies throughout our lives, there are so many maladaptive behaviors that we take on throughout this recovery journey from the time we're teens and 20s and 30s and 40s and it all just sort of snowballs and boom, here we are on YouTube and Roku TV sharing with you our recovery journey transparently and encouraging you with a message of hope and healing so that you know that you are not alone if you are a survivor. So in a nutshell, that is who we are if you are listening on a podcast platform such as iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or iHeartRadio. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We love that you are listening. This is a video broadcast. Head on over to our Roku TV channel. You can find us by searching for Trauma Recovery University in the search area or our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Trauma Recovery University TV. So every single week we show up here, we do a live Q&A and this week's topic, um, we, oh, we do three Twitter chats a week. This is the second of three and this week's topic is strength-based recovery. <laughs> So what is strength-based recovery? Is it the same as post-traumatic growth? No, it is not. It is actually us as adults finding, locating, and honing in on and utilizing our innate and learned abilities and strengths that we have gathered across the course of our lives and using them to our advantage so that we can recover better, stronger, faster, and help other people. So. Uh, without further ado, I am going to hand this over to my partner, Bobby Parrish. And for those of you who are tuning in on a replay and you don't want to listen to us talking for the next half hour or so, you just want to look at the screen share content, no need to leave your little nasty gram comments and, and little meanies. Some of you can just be mean. No need to be mean. You can just page on down in the description area of this video, click on the number and it will fast forward. No need to leave ugly comments. Thank you. Bobby, your turn. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm so happy to see you here tonight. We already have quite a few people out on the Twitter stream. And like Athena said, it is so wonderful to see you all gathering there, greeting each other, offering one another support. Um, Today we're talking about strength-based recovery. And one of the important things that is a part of strength-based recovery is recognizing what your strengths are. And this morning in chat, I have an echo, I'm sorry, I'm trying to re. You sound fantastic for us, okay. but, but, you, but I know it's annoying to hear your own voice like repeated back to you. So take your time, whatever you need. Um, this morning in chat, we had people doing just the most amazing job of pointing out one another's strengths. And it was um, just breathtaking to watch people saying, you know, um, Matt, I see your strengths as 
because it's so hard for us as survivors to see our own strengths. And one of the things that we really advise people do is ask their loved ones, ask safe support people, ask their therapist, what are my strengths? And so we talked about that and then people just started sharing their strengths and um, it was it was pretty darn cool. And so it is amazing to see everyone already gathering online and sharing with one another and encouraging and supporting one another. Our community is amazing, absolutely amazing. So if you have not joined it yet on Twitter, um, we're gonna share the Twitter chat schedule at the end of the broadcast, and we really encourage you to join in. Um, we promise that you will be welcomed with open arms and um, without judgment. It is just an amazing group of people. So before we go any further, I wanna issue a trigger warning for tonight's broadcast. Discussing childhood abuse and specifically childhood sexual abuse. So please practice excellent self-care tonight while you're participating in chat, while you're listening to the video, listening to the podcast, watching on YouTube or iTunes. If you're triggered, just go ahead and shut it down and um, walk away. It'll be there later. If you're watching live, it will upload to our YouTube channel within a matter of a couple of hours after we're done and you'll be able to pick up where you left off. Or maybe this topic is just not right for you right now. And maybe a couple of months from now, you can come back to it. Not every topic is for every survivor. And we realize that, but we try and choose topics that fit large groups of our community. But maybe this one isn't for you. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, you don't have to shove yourself into the cookie cutter to make it fit. Um, I, you'll hear Athena and I say this a lot. This is your recovery. You know what works for you. If this doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you're triggered or if you're in crisis and you're in the United States or Canada, we encourage you to reach out to RAIN, R-A-I-N-N. That's the Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network. They can be reached at 1-800-656-HOPE. H-O-P-E, or you can access them on their 24-7 crisis chat feature on their website, R-A-I-N-N dot org. If you are in the UK or Ireland, you can reach out to the Samaritans. Um, they're a wonderful organization. We had someone this morning in chat talk about how helpful the Samaritans had been to her in her recovery. The Samaritans have a hotline that number is 116123. Yay, I finally read, I finally Yay. memorized it. I did not have to look at my little sticky. <laughs> um, you can also reach out to the Samaritans via email and you would email joe, J-O, at samaritans.org. If you were in Australia, hello, um, I believe it's like 10.30 or 11 o'clock in the morning. Well, it can't be 10.30 because it's 8.12 here. So it's either 10.12 or 11.12. Yeah, it you does, and I'm telling you. Does weird, it does the weird thing. It does. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a whole different clock. No, you don't. <laughs> okay, so I think it's tomorrow morning, so Tuesday morning for you. If you are in crisis or you need help urgently, your national crisis line <laughs> is 131114. And we would encourage you to reach out if you need help because you deserve help. We do not, however, encourage you to seek help on the Twitter stream for tonight's broadcast. When people are in crisis, it triggers others, and then they cannot participate in the broadcast and the accompanying Twitter chat. We encourage you to get help, to ask for support. We just encourage you to do it without the hashtag, no more shame for tonight's broadcast. Um, so tonight we're talking about strength-based recovery. And I am so excited. We are excited to talk about this topic because it focuses on our strengths yeah and so often 
um, we as survivors are given a list of all the things we do wrong and pretty much told to go out and fix them. And then we'll be fine, right? Because if you just cross all those negative things off the list and just stop doing all those things, everything will be peachy keen. But that's not what strength-based recovery teaches. Strength-based recovery teaches that we identify our strengths, as hard as it is for survivors, and we'll talk about that one, how to do that for you. And then you build on those strengths and you use those strengths to fuel your recovery. Okay, for example, I'm gonna give a quick example and we'll go into the one page um, after I double check and see if there's any questions or discussion. Um, one of my strengths is being able to show compassion to other human beings. It's just part of my toolkit, um, whether I was born with it or that's part of the strength, one of the strengths I developed as a result of my abuse, I don't know. But in my recovery, I learned how to show myself compassion. I didn't know how to do that before I was in recovery. But when I got into recovery, I recognized my strength of showing others compassion. And I turned that towards myself. It was amazingly powerful because we didn't get any compassion when we were kids. Most of us didn't. Some of us did, but most of us didn't. So to show myself compassion, and compassion means to want to alleviate another's suffering. That's what compassion is. So to turn to myself and want to alleviate my own suffering was very powerful. Um, so that's what strength-based recovery is about. It is not about giving you a list of all the things you need to stop doing and telling you go out and do it. And guess what? Ha-ha, you'll be transformed magically into a healed person. No. Nope. It's about saying recognize what you're good at and build on those. And then that eventually you will, you will be so strong in those areas that it will starve out. <coughs> you okay? I am. I keep coughing. Sorry. I tried to mute myself earlier. I'm sorry. <laughs> it will starve out some of the unhealthy behaviors. And I just want to make a really quick side note here. Okay. <laughs> if, if you have some behaviors like some alcohol or drug addictions, unfortunately building on your strengths probably isn't gonna make those go away and you're gonna to have to tackle those separately. So what I mean are unhealthy coping behaviors, um, unhealthy thoughts about yourself, I'm not worthy, I'm not okay, I don't deserve to be loved. But if you have um, a coping technique such as alcohol or drug addiction, a food addiction, um, chances are those things are going to need some separate work. And strength-based recovery, you can still use that in that recovery model, but it's not as easy as saying build on your strengths and it will starve out the bad things and they'll go away, okay? But for a lot of other things, it works that way. And it is so amazing because we have spent so many years of our lives already getting beaten up. And to have someone hand us this list of, you do this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, and this wrong, and you need to go fix that, feels like being handed the way to the world um, when we've already spent so many years struggling. So that's why I love strength-based recovery. And I am, uh, we are so excited to share it with you tonight. Athena, what are people saying on the Twitter stream? Are there any questions <coughs> or comments? Or I apologize for the coughing. We have lots of comments. I apologize in advance for lots of coughing. For some reason, I used my voice more today early on in the day than I normally do. And I think that I only have so much voice and I need to reserve it and not book meetings like before this because you guys are my priority. Um, I started a little bit of a thread in saying what strengths do, do we see among one another here? And there are lots of answers. Um, Phoenix says she sees encouragement. Um, Kate says goodness. Um, 
Lucy said, uh, she, I think she said, nurturing, nurturing others who have been broken, um, encouragement, kindness. Um, in Bobby, I see a tower of strength for others, someone who is steady and safe and unchanging. Amen. Um, I see a strength in every person here who has the courage to show up. This group of survivors is incredibly loving and selfless. Every single one of you are the reason I keep going every day. Um, I'm still getting to know people here, but you are all good at making me feel welcome. Um, very supportive of the observations that I have to share. Everyone is very supportive. I see a woman of great faith, empathy, and loving kindness. Um, and then um, Sarah says that she finds this topic hard um, and she feels really big headed to say her strengths, if that makes sense. And I, and I want to, um, I want to acknowledge, uh, and Kelly said earlier, which I can't find it on the stream um, because it's, there, there's so, so, so many. This is by far the most um, talkative chat we've ever, 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 ever had on a Monday night. Kelly said earlier she finds it hard to recognize her strengths um, so that she can um, recognize, she has a hard time recognizing her strengths so that she can acknowledge them and use them in her recovery. And then tying in with that, Sarah says she finds it boastful and very uncomfortable and awkward. And I want to acknowledge both of those statements with your statements are very, very valid. And it is natural for you to feel this way for a few different reasons. And Bobby is going to expound upon this in our one page, our comprehensive one page. If you are tuning in live or you're watching a replay, we have as a gift just to thank you for being one of our loyal listeners, viewers, subscribers, or just an awesome survivor. You can have access to not only tonight's downloadable one page resource, we have one every single week that matches up with the topic, but you can have access to the entire library of downloadable one page resources by going to one of our websites, which is traumarecoveryuniversity.com or nomoreshameproject.com. You will see a tab that says downloadables. When you click it, you will be asked for your email address and you will get immediate access to tonight's downloadable one page resource titled Strength Based Recovery and the entire list and library of almost a hundred topics that will help encourage you in your recovery journey in your adult life after being abused as a child. So I want to acknowledge Sarah's comment about feeling awkward and boastful and Phoenix's comment about not being able to recognize. And you guys, those are valid. And they're valid for two reasons that I want to mention, and Bobby will mention more later on in our comprehensive one page, which is awesome. If you have not yet gone to the website, go and do it. And then we'll just be here. Just go get it and then come back, like just new browser, something. Awesome one page tonight, guys. I want to acknowledge, A, we are groomed. Our abuse doesn't just happen like, boom, just like that. No, we are groomed to be abused. Unless... You, you were raised in a beautiful, loving, awesome, leave it to beaver environment, and then you left one day and got, got thrown into a van because someone offered you candy and you got abused one time. Like, if, if this is abuse from someone that you knew and trusted, you were groomed. Please Google the word grooming. Go to our YouTube channel. Look up our video on grooming. Please go to our website and look up our one page on grooming. Our grooming teaches us that we are worthless. Our grooming teaches us that we don't um, have the brains or the wherewithal to know right from wrong. We asked for the abuse. We, we were lured in. Grooming is luring. They lure you. They meet your needs. They meet the needs that you have so that they can lure you in so that they can abuse you. Your grooming teaches you to not trust yourself. So even if you're feeling pretty darn good one day, you, you've been taught and groomed and programmed like a little robot to not feel good because you can't trust that you're really feeling good. Am I really feeling good? I didn't, I'm not feeling good. And if I am feeling good, that's bad. The, the rug's going to get ripped out from underneath me, so I shouldn't feel good right now. I need to brace myself for something bad that's going to happen. And in some cultures, specifically British culture and Asian culture, we have a global podcast here reaching 64 countries. Guys, culturally, it is not widely accepted to say... I'm pretty good at this. I, I am great at what I do. I am proud to say that I am excellent at blank. That is considered 
pompous and wrong and rude and disgraceful to tote anything about yourself and talk about yourself. So it is very, very, very understandable that Sarah would feel this way because Sarah lives, Sarah lives in the UK. That's not a widely accepted, I'm going to talk about myself and feel awesome about myself and acknowledge my strengths. That's not something that is accepted in her culture that she was raised in. And on top of that, you're grooming lies to you. And the part about Phoenix saying it's hard for her to acknowledge her strengths, chances are when we're raised in an environment where our loved ones or our, our um, primary caregivers are not in the habit of praising us for the things that we do well because they're afraid they're going to give us a big head. Oh, you're just going to get so full of yourself. You're going to be prideful. You know, humility precedes honor. Pride goes before the fall. You know, let's just pull out all those scripture verses and just beat people over the head of a, over the head with them so that the abuse survivors never, ever, ever get their head above ground. Now, I'm not saying that you should go around and be completely disregarding of other people and exploit other people so you can make yourself feel better and brag about yourself. That's not what we are saying here. We are saying that it is natural to not acknowledge our strengths because chances are they weren't pointed out. And it's natural to feel awkward pointing out our own strengths because it's not a cultural, um, it's not something that's culturally accepted across the globe and our grooming lies to us and beats down our self-worth. Bobby, your comments on that, on all that. You know, I think one of the most devastating effects of our grooming is that it decimates our self-esteem. And when your self-esteem is decimated, it is so hard to recover because you don't see yourself as worth it and you don't see yourself as capable of recovering. Um, and you see what happened to when you were a child as your fault. And so when we switch that around and we ask you to talk about your strengths, that's like asking someone to start speaking a foreign language that they've never heard before. So of course it's difficult, it's contrary to everything that you were groomed to believe and then chances are high that it's something that you were you know there was also a cultural element um, within my family culture of Catholicism it was complete it was sinful as heck to admit that you were good at something it was prideful and you didn't do it and so when someone asks you to list your strengths and you have all your grooming and then perhaps cultural standards going against you, it is really hard. And we acknowledge that. We know that it's not like we're telling you to go to the kitchen and get a drink of water. Okay. It is difficult. Hey, Bobby. Um, um, Allie has a question. Would it be all right if I asked that or should I wait? No, absolutely. I saw a question from earlier, something about compassion. Yes, Allie has an excellent question that was one of the most asked questions during chat this morning. And I would like to share that with all of our audience who are here live and all the people on, on the replay. The question is, I can show compassion to others, but... How can I do it toward myself? This is a challenge. And this is a huge challenge for most people in recovery. We are able to see good in others and show good to others. And when it comes to us, we're at the bottom of the pile. Bobby, I would love for you to answer this question because I always love it when you illustrate this stuff. Go for it. You know, uh, my standard response, and I want to really quick give a shout out to Zola, who's here for the first time. Hi, Zola. Hi, Zola. It's good to see you. Um, one of the most powerful strategies in recovery, um, when you're thinking is, let's see, maybe it's clouded a little bit by your grooming that you're not good enough is what I call a turnaround. Okay. So I started out good at showing compassion to other people. So what was one of the things that I used to do to show compassion to other people? Simple, tiny little thing. Um, 
if my friend was stressed, I made her a cup of tea. Okay. Well, if that was good for my friend, then that would be a compassionate thing to do for myself too, wouldn't it? So when I'm stressed, a compassionate thing to do is to make myself a cup of tea. And so I turn it around and I do it for myself. And I start out with things like that. Um, if I have a client who says to me um, something like, what happened to me when I was young was my fault. And I'll say, okay, you know, name a child in your life that you love. And they'll name a child in their life that they love. And I'll turn it around and I'll say, okay, if that child was abused, would you believe that it was their fault? Well, no, of course not. Okay, then, why is it your fault when it's not their fault? Your eyes are clear when you see someone else. It's when we see ourselves that our vision is clouded by our grooming. And so do those turnarounds and say, okay, what are compassionate things I do for other people? I sit and I listen. I offer them listening ears. Well, then offer them to yourself. Rather than, you know, if you're feeling stressed and anxious, just sit down and rather than beating yourself up, offer yourself a chance just to sit with your feelings, acknowledge them, be kind to yourself about them, rather than what might be your standard behavior, which is beating yourself up and insisting that you feel better right this very minute. Um, that is, to me, one of the easiest ways to learn how to do something for that we're good at doing for other people. Okay, and it applies to everything from compassion to um, forgiveness to um, Oh gosh, feeling um, <laughs> self-esteem and self-worth. You know, if someone else makes mistakes, but we still still see them as worthy, why is it that if we make a mistake, we absolutely we automatically lose our worthiness? We don't. So we have to keep turning those around and recognizing that our view of ourselves is clouded by our grooming. It's not clear. It's not truthful. So use that truth test of how you would treat someone you love. That's your truth test. And if it applies to someone you love, then it applies to you too. Hey, Bobby. Yes. August had a panic attack the other day about discussing trust because she realizes that she does not trust herself due to her abuse. And I just wanted to tell her that she is not alone. Our abuse lies to us. And... The way we learn to trust ourselves is through our intuition and the way we um, access our intuition, uh, which is broken because of our grooming and our abuse, is by healing that intuition through congruence. And the way we heal our intuition through congruence is with boundaries. As we establish and maintain healthy boundaries, we become we can come we become in alignment with ourselves our outside matches our inside our yes is an inside yes our outer no is an inside no and then are we exercise that intuition muscle we're healing it through congruence and as we can access and reach that intuition we learn to trust ourselves it's such a process process like it's a process it's not like a process it's not like a like a wave of wand one and done like bobby and i always tell you but that will help august establishing learning about learning about and establishing and maintaining healthy boundaries will help you with trusting yourself um, and it will pay dividends. Exponentially, your recovery will be supercharged with boundaries. Learning about them, establishing them, and maintaining them. Bobby, your comments on that? Absolutely, because boundaries help us stay out of situations that are toxic. And so boundaries are like a preventative measure, if that makes sense. Okay. I mean, once we're already in the toxic situation, we have to get ourselves out. And unfortunately, 
Most of us grew up in toxic situations when we spend decades trying to extricate ourselves from them. But boundaries and keeping our boundaries and maintaining our boundaries will help us stay out of future toxic situations and toxic relationships. So yes, um, learn about boundaries, read about boundaries, set some boundaries, and then practice maintaining them. And again, one of the things that Athena and I love to do with our community is allow them to practice healthy behaviors with each other. That is one of the things that we absolutely love our Facebook support groups for. Um, at the end of the broadcast, we'll talk about how you can get connected with our Facebook support groups. But when you're in community with other survivors, you get to practice all the healthy stuff. And that makes it so much easier to go out in the big bad world and feel confident that you can start practicing and having success with setting boundaries. We didn't get to set boundaries when we were kids. You know, nobody allowed us to have our own wishes and wants. Nobody allowed us to say, no, you can't touch my body. Nobody allowed us to say, hey, I don't like it when you scream at me. I don't like it when you hit me. I don't like it when you passive aggressively manipulate me. Um, I need some love here, help. Um, we didn't get to do that. And so, you know, years later, here we are learning how to do these things. And um, setting boundaries and asking for what we want and need is one of the big ones. So, but so is identifying your strengths. And that too will take you a long way. And I love it so much more than um, that concept of get rid of what doesn't work you know we can we can dig up those weeds and then we turn around and gosh darn there's another batch of them growing but if we focus on building up the nice things the good things the things we're already good at um, you know pretty soon those flower gardens get so vibrant um, and so they thrive so well um, that they choke the bad stuff out so um, feed your flower garden, feed your vegetable garden, whatever makes you happy. Um, I think Maggie was talking on the Twitter stream something about dandelions. Um, yeah, dan dandelion greens. Yes. My, yeah. grand my grandmother used to make dandelion wine. I never tried it because it sounded nasty, but... It sounds very bitter, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe when you add, like, did anybody else used to eat sour grass? I was taught to eat sour grass. Maybe it's because I was just really hungry, but there was this grass that had these yellow flowers and it wasn't dandelion. So don't ever eat a dandelion. Like, don't eat that kind of grass because it's really disgusting. But there are these other flowers and they have long stems. And if you pull them and you rinse them, although I don't even think we rinsed them, I just like got it and ate it. Um, it just, it tastes sour, but it tastes, it tasted delicious and um, again maybe I was just very hungry like <laughs> I mean you're like eating grass hello Athena like I just have only just remembered that just for I had not thought about that probably in 20 or 30 years but um, yeah I used to eat what we called sour grass it would grow along the sides of the roads and I would eat it like on my way home from school and on the way to school I mean I would like I would eat that stuff um, had just pretty yellow flowers on it. <laughs> it's really good. I wonder, and then someone told me when I was a teenager that the reason sour grass tasted sour is because animals peed on it. And I was like, oh, thanks a lot. You just ruined sour grass for me. Like, anyway, probably way too much information for this podcast, but. Yeah, I have never heard of that. You never heard of sour grass? Oh, uh -huh. goodness. It, you're missing out. Um, Julianne wants to know if anybody else feels themselves cringe at the thought of identifying or admitting or acknowledging our strengths. Yes, yes, yes. Especially if you're in the UK or if you're in Asia, any Asian culture or even uh, like Indian cultures, Middle Eastern cultures. Basically, if you're in anywhere besides America where everybody just decides to brag about themselves because it's supposedly socially acceptable and it's called networking. Um, who did that? like probably politicians, but yeah, it is terrifying, Julianne, to admit, acknowledge, or identify your strengths. Like, especially if you're a survivor and you're not living in a culture that, that um, fosters an environment of let's hear about you. Like 
in America, when you come to visit America, the first thing that happens when you go anywhere is the first question someone asks you is, so what do you do? I mean, seriously, it's ridiculous. You guys, what do you do? So it, it's like you're defined by what it is that you do for a living. It's just the way it is here in America. And I don't think that it's great. I really don't. There's, um, I was reading on Huffington Post about, oh, Siri's about ready to start saying something to me. I'm not talking to you, Siri. Um, there was a post on Huffington Post, a blog post, and it was about a type of therapy. It's a group therapy where the first question you are asked at, um, at this uh, retreat is, what is your story? And it's not, what do you do? It's what is your story? Right. Um, yes. You know, I that way that. You, you can openly share your story, like what you would like to share with someone. You know, you're not just, it's, all, it's not all about like, here's my business card, you know, call me. It's, it's not like, it, but Americans are very braggadocious. They're very arrogant. They're very, I'm going to walk in and talk all about myself. And there's, um, there's a uh, a blog called UYD Mag. Um, use your difference. It's it's how you use your difference to make a difference, and it talks a lot about crossing cultures. And when Americans go to take jobs um, in other countries, specifically like in London or um, other areas of the UK, and they walk in to interview for a job, and they start talking about themselves, and the owners of the companies tell them to F off because, and they literally say like, perhaps you should F off um, because they don't like the way that the Americans come in and just start bragging about themselves because it's just not socially acceptable in the UK to um, not only express your feelings and what it is that you're thinking, but um, expressing your feelings and what it is that you're thinking about yourself. Like it's just not, something that is accepted or encouraged in that culture from what it is that I gather. So, um, Bobby, do you have any experience in that area or have you, have you heard um, of that talked about? I'm off topic, sorry. That's okay. I just think it's important. I want to make the point right now that we're not talking about you identifying your strengths so that you can share that knowledge with anyone other than yourself and perhaps your support system. Um, we're not advocating that you identify your strengths and then tattoo them on your forehead and go forth out into the world. Um, we're advocating that you identify your strengths so that you can build on them in your recovery. So this isn't about bragging about anything. This isn't about um, pumping yourself up full of hot air. Um, this is just about recognizing, okay? Recognizing, which is a whole lot different than um, bragging about. So, but it feels the same. It, fe we want it, it feels the feels same. Yes, it feels, it feels the, the same for us because of our grooming, but it's not the same. Um, so that's what I was hoping to clarify is that what we're asking is in fact different than showing up in a room and saying, hey, everybody, here I am. My strengths are compassion, um, listening, and um, supporting others. No, <laughs> that's not what we're asking. And I know, I think it's very difficult for survivors. They don't have it even, we don't even have that in our DNA to behave that way. Um, so I really don't fret a lot about teaching strength-based recoveries with survivors, thinking that they will become um, bragging and arrogant people. Um, it's just about identifying and recognizing your strengths and then building your little Lego towers on top of them so that eventually um, they're so high that your weaknesses are just little tiny itty bitty things down on the ground. 
that you can see, barely see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, lots of talk about boundaries. Uh, there were no boundaries where I grew up. I'm learning about boundaries. If there's a person you've tried to help but you realize you can't, it's healthy to walk away. Yes, 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 Christy, amen, sister. Um, because of the strength I've received here, I've been able to make positive changes, including getting a lock on my door. Locks on doors are huge for survivors, guys. Um, I never was allowed to have a lock on my door. We weren't even allowed to have locks on our bathroom doors because I don't need to explain that because lots of bad stuff happened to me in the bathroom. Um, locks are huge. Um, there's, let's see... Oh, Melissa's here. Hi, Melissa. We love you. How's the summit going? You guys, Melissa has a summit going on right now. Um, and we would love for you. Oh, sour grip. We would love for you to check out Melissa's summit because Melissa is an incredible supporter of this community. And she has a podcast called The Grass Gets Greener. And it's all about overcoming obstacles with the, with a specific topic of bullying, but overcoming obstacles in general, overcoming great, great, great obstacles to live a powerful and meaningful life. So the Grass Gets Greener podcast and then ask Melissa Wilson, the Melissa Wilson, um, about her, her summit going on right now. Um, there is, I knew that Maggie would have my back. Thank you, girl. Sour grass is known as wood sorrel. It is edible and is sour due to oxalic acid so I wasn't it wasn't because of animals peeing on it so I feel much better now um, <laughs> uh, bragging about yourself is very frowned upon in the UK yes 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 um, I think I'm going to say that my toxic family perhaps you should F off yes Jen perhaps that might that might work but but if it doesn't work out for you, let you, I want you to know that we support you no matter what. We don't want to encourage you to like be rude and horrible. But you know what? Just protect yourself. Have some healthy boundaries. We, we encourage you. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, Sarah says, I think I have found that if I would ever mention a strength, I would be torn down and told that I was wrong. Sarah, you're not alone. Many of us grew up in environments where we would bring home our spelling test with an A plus on it, hoping that we would get an acknowledgement, like, well done, good job on your spelling test. Um, and sometimes that was not acknowledged. Sometimes that was ignored. And other times we were told that, of course we did good on that spelling test. You are my son. You are my daughter. Of course you did well on that test. I raised you to be a good speller. Of course you're doing well in school. You are my daughter. I raised you to be a good student. So your accomplishments and your hard work were not only not acknowledged, but they were um, stolen from you and slapped on to your abuser or someone else as a badge of honor, even though you're the one that that stayed up at night studying and you're the one that did all the hard work. So I want to acknowledge that you're not alone, Sarah. Many, many, many of us here on this YouTube channel, here on this Roku channel, here on this uh, chat, hashtag no more shame, we can identify with not only were our strengths not acknowledged and not only was an environment of acknowledging our strengths not nurtured, um, but we were torn down and told that we were wrong if we did acknowledge something good in ourselves. So you are not you're not alone, Sarah, and thank you for bringing that to our attention. You know, and I think another way that um, our strengths were not acknowledged, sometimes they were acknowledged, but when they're acknowledged by someone who out of one side of their mouth says, oh yes, you're great, and then 10 minutes later either abuses you or assaults you or verbally rips you to pieces, those good words have no meaning. Um, and then there were some who like to acknowledge us in public in order to make themselves look good. But in private, um, we were torn down. So sometimes even though the words were present, they had so little meaning or they were so overshadowed by the horrible behavior that accompanied them 
that it didn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter if someone stands up and says, you know, oh, we, you know, we love Bobby. She's just wonderful. And then tech seconds later, that person is, you know, beating you into a corner. Whack. Um, Out of nowhere. Yeah. Whack. Like right. good one moment. Whack the next. <laughs> yeah. It kind of erases those good words. So um, even if begins, they were shared. It begins to train us to not want any attention, even good attention, because with good attention comes abuse. Right. And that's why we love to hide and be, and be invisible. invisible. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I can't tell you how many survivors we've talked with who share with us how frightened they are of actually being successful. Because being uh, successful means they have to be visible. Yeah, and that happens scary. a lot. That's why fear of success is so much more common than fear of failure, but we actually lump it in with a fear of failure for some reason because it's the fear of being seen, but yep. it's being seen yep. and if we're successful, then what What do we do for an encore? And then if we're, if we're seen in the public eye, then we're open to criticism and we're open to the meanies on YouTube that like to post nasty grams and send us emails. Um, that's you, meanie, don't do it. <laughs> Think before you post. Um, Phoenix says, and I want to share this on the video because this is huge, huge, huge strength, you guys, if, if all you have been hanging out in this community for a while, for any of us to be able to acknowledge one of our strengths um, is big. Phoenix says, I think my strength is being able to put my story in meaningful and insightful words. Am I close? And my answer is a big fat hell yeah. You are very close. That is one of your strengths, Phoenix. Um, your blog is reaching more lives than you will ever know about. And um, you have encouraged every single person on this on this broadcast and, and in our chats just by being present and sharing your truth. So I would say one of your strengths is definitely being able to put your story out there in meaningful and insightful words. You are very transparent when you write and you're very vulnerable when you write. And just like my my dear business partner, favorite business partner in the whole wide world and partner in everything. Hello, like she's my wordsmith. I call her my wordsmith. She just, if I don't know what word I'm searching for for the moment to like perfectly illustrate what it is that I'm trying to say. I'm like, Bobby, 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 Bobby. What, what am I trying to say? And she'll just be like, Boop, and, the, and the word just comes. Like, it's just like magical. I don't know how she does it. So yes, Phoenix. Um, I would say that that is one of your strengths. And um, Stephanie says that Bobby gives off a palpable warmth that makes you feel hugged. Aww. So, I know, thank you, Stephanie. I would absolutely agree. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think. Oh, and Melissa says, thanks, Athena. Oh, it's not her summit, sorry, but it's one that she's supporting. So it's food re foodrevolutionsummit.org. Uh, we just love your work, Melissa, and anything that you're involved in. So um, Legos are amazing. Let's talk about Legos tonight. <laughs> um, my Katie says, my abuser constantly praised me, so it is very hard now to accept compliments from others or even from myself. Katie, you're not alone. Um, in childhood, compliments always followed abuse for me. And in adulthood, my main abuser would praise me, praise me, praise me, praise me over and over and over again just to lure me in so that she could shred me with ugly, like, reminders of what a crappy wife I am and what a horrible human being I am. And don't I feel guilty that I'm not making more money? And and so what does so-and-so think about the work you're doing? So don't you think that so-and-so cares about the work you're doing? Well, what do they? I mean, she would she compliment me, compliment me, compliment me, build me up, build me up, build me up, and then just shred me and then rip me back down to the point where I wasn't able to get out of bed and I was having suicidal ideation. So Katie, you're not alone. You are not the only person this has happened to. And I'm so happy that you've put that out there and acknowledged that that is one of the reasons why it is hard for you to accept compliments from others and even yourself. And I'm hoping that this is a turning point for you. And for everyone else that is sharing here, um, ever, I can't even keep up. You all are just amazing. 
I'm hoping this is a turning point for many of us in, in just sharing with the world. It is difficult for me to acknowledge my own strengths and abilities because blank, whether it's because that's what my abuser did, it was something I'm not familiar with, it's not culturally acceptable, it's been difficult for me to accept and acknowledge my strengths and abilities because blank. Today, I am choosing to receive these words of affirmation and allow them to sink in. It may be difficult for them to sink in, but I'm going to try. Today, I'm going to try. From this day forward, I'm going to try to allow words of affirmation and encouragement from safe people to sink in to the inside of me so that I can begin to see those good things in myself. I want to encourage you to own that statement. I want to really encourage each of you who struggle with acknowledging and receiving words of affirmation and encouragement. It wasn't long ago, you guys, and we're going to shift into our one page here in a moment. It wasn't long ago that I literally was at the, the bottom, bottom, bottom pit, pit, bottom of the slimiest pit of despair that I've ever been in in my entire life. It wasn't long ago. And my dear friend and business partner, Bobby Parrish, would ask me questions about things that I thought were beautiful or things that I thought were good. And she would ask me what part I played in those. Um, are you able to look at how well your son is doing and really own that you were an excellent mother. I wasn't able to do that. I found 12 reasons as to why I couldn't do that. Are you able to look at your marriage and see what a blessing you are to your husband? I wasn't able to do that. I found 100 reasons why he's the one who blessed me and I wasn't able to bless him. I was the lucky one. Are you able to do this, 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 this? Or and, and she went down the line and she was really wanting me to see that I could do good things and that I could be good and that I was innately good and that I was reaching people and doing important work and I couldn't receive any of those compliments you guys it wasn't long ago this is just a year or two ago I struggled to the point where I was having suicidal ideation I didn't even want to live I was really really struggling and one day I shared with Bobby how proud I was at how beautiful my orchids were blooming and that was my light bulb. She, asked, she would ask me, how are your orchids doing? Are you able to look at your orchids and see how beautiful they're doing and know that you helped to nurture them? And I'm not sure if it's because it wasn't another person who had abused me. My orchids had never abused me. I wasn't, I wasn't sure, and I'm still not sure, if that is why I was able to receive it and actually own it but it started a chain of events in my life that allowed me to start owning the good things about me and receiving good. It was a catalyst for change in my brain. It was a light bulb. It was a fork in the road. It was a turning point for me. Um, if it is a pet that you have and your pet loves you unconditionally and is happy to see you all the time, please don't minimize that and say, well, he loves everyone. Of course, he just loves me because I feed him. No, you show that pet love. If your plants are alive because you water them and you play music or talk to them or, or make sure that they have a good environment, own that. Yes, I water those plants. I, I make sure that, that they're blossoming and blooming and that they're healthy and alive and that they're not dead. I just want to encourage you to just own one thing that's good today and count that as a strength so you can build on that one strength into a strength-based recovery model, which we're going to talk about in our one page right now. Bobby, your comments on any of that? Thank you, by the way, for helping me with my turning point and being a catalyst for me. <laughs> You're welcome. And I love what you said. Yes, just one thing. It's just one small thing. And it's okay to admit this is hard, but don't say to yourself, this is impossible. It's okay to say, this is hard, but I'm going to work on this. Today, I'm going to believe in this one strength for myself and stick with it until you really own it and then add another and then add another and I promise you that it will gain momentum and snowball um, the laws of physics are not wrong it will 
it will pick up energy. Um, let me just get a, a hashtag here on this tweet, send it out, and let's switch over to our one page. Um, let's see here. Master my amazing. Oh, there it is. Screen sharing capabilities here. Okay. Oops, wrong page. Hang on. It there we go. Right. It looks right. It looks beautiful. Okay. okay. So strength-based recovery one page. And again, as Athena mentioned earlier, um, to have access to these and all of the ones that we have done, and I believe we have right around 100 of them right now, um, go to nomoshameproject.com, click on the tab, this is downloadables. And you will have access to every one page we've ever done. You can print them off, make them into paper airplanes, whatever you like, but personally we recommend keeping them in a binder or a folder so you have easy access to them or save them in your camera roll on your phone so you can look at them anytime you want to. So, one of the most powerful assets a survivor has in recovery is a healthy self-worth. And Athena and I will say this until the day we die. A healthy self-worth is so powerful in recovery. Unfortunately, this is something that our abuse and grooming often shreds into non-existence. Using a strength-based model in our recovery not only helps us build up our self-esteem by identifying our strengths, but enables us to but enables us to utilize them to supercharge our recovery. Our innate and learned strengths are our superpowers during our recovery from child abuse. One of the key strategies an abuser uses in grooming their victim is to annihilate their self-worth. And I picked that word annihilate on purpose because it has a very strong emotional energy to it because that is exactly what our abusers and enablers did. They annihilated our self-worth and they did it on purpose because it's difficult to control a victim who knows they're worth being treated well. When the abuser tears down their victim's self-esteem, they create an individual who not only doesn't believe they deserve to be treated well, but perhaps also someone who believes they deserve to be abused. And some of us, it went one step further. It was that we caused the abuse to happen because we were terrible people. Often survivors enter recovery feeling very badly about themselves. And for me, I think that's probably 99% of the time when I have clients come to me, they're feeling badly about themselves. They often have a hard time believing they both deserve to recover and are capable of recovering. The beauty of a strength-based recovery model is that it not only helps a survivor recognize their strengths, but also helps them see that they have value and self-worth as well. Once a survivor has identified their strengths that they can build on in recovery, I didn't say that right. Once a survivor has identified their strengths, they can then build on them in recovery. Rem remember, it is so much easier to build on innate and learned strengths than it is to eradicate unhealthy behavior. And here's my note, okay? Some unhealthy behaviors and coping strategies still need to be stopped, such as alcohol or drug abuse, but building on our strengths has a natural side effect of starving out unhealthy behaviors. Building up the good instead of deleting the bad. So if you have some unhealthy coping techniques such as an alcohol or drug addiction, you still need to do your work to eradicate those. Um, as an example of a strength in a survivor, and this is 
the one that I talked about earlier, would be showing compassion for others. Once that strength has been identified, the survivor can be, begin showing that to themselves, which they have likely not done as they didn't feel they deserved it. But self-compassion can be very transformative, even if it feels foreign and a bit false at first. And I can pretty much guarantee that when you start practicing these strengths in ways that benefit you, that they will feel foreign and they will feel false. But with practice, it will get easier. Athena, how's the Twitter stream? Um, it's going really, really well. Um, Lucy said that you took the words right out of her tweet that she was tweeting. She was torn down and she honestly believed that she was the cause. And Sarah, sweet Sarah, says that I'm going to be brave and say that one of my strengths is that I'm caring and thoughtful to others. And I absolutely I uh, told her, I agree that those are strengths yes. that I see in her. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I love that we can affirm that with one another. You know, some of us have been in this community together for um, more than a year and a half now. Um, yeah. So August, it'll be two years. And um, Rar, it's Laura, says that she is going to allow herself to receive the fact that she is a kick-ass human. And I wanna tell Laura that I am so proud of her and that she is a kick-ass human. Yep. <laughs> Most definitely. Oh yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. Okay. Um, to utilize a strength-based model in your recovery, follow these tips and strategies. And the first part is just to identify your strengths. And as many people have pointed out tonight, that feels so hard. As survivors, it feels so hard. So begin by asking a safe friend or support person for help if you need it. Um, right now I have a client that I asked to make a list of um, her strengths. And her immediate response was, I can't do that. And I said, okay. I said, then go to your partner. Start there. Ask him for a list of your strengths and see if that prompts some thoughts of what you can identify as your strengths. Ask a friend um, if, if you have a helping professional, if you have a coach or a therapist, a clergy person, um, a sponsor through an NA or AA or CODA program, ask them. I can pretty much guarantee that if you hear the same thing several times, I'm pretty 100% sure that's one of your strengths. There are a lot of people saying that this chat has helped them find their voice so that they can share in therapy. Yay! I know, that's a strength. We're going to we're going to receive that as a strength that we have shared somehow. We've created a safe space for you all to come and be. And that is helping you to acknowledge a strength in you, which is sharing during therapy. So it's like a chain reaction, you guys. It is. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Um, so after you've identified your strengths, you want to identify ways you can use those strengths to help you in your recovery. Okay, so Sarah said one of her strengths is being kind to others. I agree. I 100% agree. Now, how can Sarah turn that around and use that strength to be kind to herself? What would be some examples of things that she could do to be kind to herself. Okay, so that's the next step in the process. Identify your strengths and identify those ways to help you in your recovery. Practice using these strengths in ways that support your recovery. Build up those particular strength muscles over time and with increasing use. Muscle memory applies to recovery as much as it 
applies to working out. Okay, I think we've talked before and people have identified how when under stress, they revert back to behaviors that they learned when they were very young. When we practice the healthy behaviors, the more we practice them, the more we use them, the more we put those into our muscle memory rather than the unhealthy strategies from years ago. So that's what we mean by creating a new muscle memory. So when stress hits, instead of reaching for the old, we have worked hard enough to set the new into place. When your weaknesses or ways of being less than come into your mind, practice shifting your thinking back to your strengths, okay? Do your very best not to beat yourself up or put yourself down for losing your focus. Just gently redirect your thinking. And note, this gets easier ever, over time. Um, I have clients all the time that I talk to about what their strengths are. And one of the pretty common responses I hear is, it's really hard for me to remember that. Yep, you're right. It is hard for you to remember that. And so when you forget and you notice yourself um, beating yourself up, or you notice yourself focusing on your weaknesses instead of your strengths, just gently shift your thinking back to where it is that you want it to be. It's a gentle process. It's a compassionate process. It's probably 180 degrees different than what you learned as a child. But I promise you, that recovery can be a very gentle, compassionate process. And if you're feeling um, abrupt, if you're feeling like you're asked to make abrupt shifts, or um, I'm trying to put this into words and I'm not doing a really good job, that if your recovery feels very um, jagged, and abrupt and constantly moving from one thing to the other without warning, that's a sign that maybe something is off kilter. Okay, because it definitely can be gentle and compassionate. And that is my wish for all of you that your recovery can be gentle and compassionate. And the last bullet point. Utilize your involvement in safe community to encourage and reinforce the use of your strengths, both with them and with yourself. So um, Athena and I have multiple safe communities available on Facebook, and we will talk a little later in the broadcast about how it is that you can tap into them. So there we go. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I cheer myself on there. Yay! <laughs> so we we have a lot of strengths. We are survivors. Uh, we have survived so much. Check us out. My strength, Stephanie said. Her strength, Stephanie says, is that she has been creative in her recovery. She has an intuitive ability to know how to heal. Woo -woo. Kudos to you, Stephanie, hello. Um, and Allie says that this, this is a safe space that we have created. Um, and, and Christy says it feels weird to say, I think I'm good at. <laughs> I know it feels weird, Christy, it's okay. We're all, we all struggle with I think I'm good at <laughs> or or what I'm good at is what we really think it sounds like but Christy we know you and we've gotten to know you over a long period of time and we are hoping beyond everything that this is a safe space for you to go out on a limb and just say 
right now I'm struggling with being able to say what I think I'm good at is but I'm going to try and I'm going to be open-minded that maybe someday down the road I will be able to openly and freely acknowledge that I do have strengths. You don't have to do this overnight, you guys. You don't have to do it like fast. You don't have to do it right now. It, you don't have to um, watch this video and, and all of a sudden be fixed. We're not waving a wand at you. Like this is a process and this is a journey and everyone's recovery journey is different and everyone moves at a different pace and um, some things trigger some people, some things encourage some people, some things, um, some things uh, frustrate some people. Like we're all so different. And so if this topic of really acknowledging your strengths, like Bobby was saying, if, if, if it's like this weird, like you're sort of like, you're feeling some resistance, then it's okay. Just pause, back burner it, no worries, come on back. And then maybe someday you'll be driving down the road or you'll be somewhere and you'll be like, wow, that person just gave me a compliment and I received it. And that's a huge area of growth. For many survivors, that is a huge area of growth, being able to receive a compliment or um, sometimes what really helps, like we mentioned in the one page, is complimenting someone else or doing something for someone else and then making a note that when you're in need or you're struggling, perhaps doing that same thing that you did for someone else for yourself or allowing someone to do something like that for you. So uh, this doesn't have to happen overnight. It's not a one and done. It's a process and we believe in you and we want to hold this safe space for you for when you get to a place that you feel safe enough and solid enough and steady enough where you can go, okay, I'm ready. I think one of my strengths might be that I'm a good listener. One of my strengths is that I'm a great student. One of my strengths is that I'm a good mom. One of my strengths is I'm, I'm really great at taking care of my pets or my flowers or my plants or I'm a great cook. Um, just one, just one, like we said a little earlier, just, just one thing, one thing that you consider to be a strength and it doesn't have to be today. It can be any time. Uh, this is a journey, there's no rush. <laughs> Bobby, did you have anything you wanted to say to everyone before we say goodbye in closing um, and shift into the portion of our broadcast and we welcome new people into safe community? Yay! Did um, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm catching up on the Twitter stream here and I'm so, um, yes, Christy, I'm giving myself a voice. That means strength. Yes, that means strength. Um, Yes, so let's support each other as we find our strength and as we find the capacity to voice our strengths. Um, we use the hashtag no more shame 24 seven. So if you identify a strength and you share it with the hashtag no more shame, let's all of us keep our eyes open and yeah. affirm one another and encourage one another. You will be surprised by how powerful that is. Yes. I also want to point out that it's Mental Health Month, May, and Reveal to Heal has a, oh, phone, behave, behave, but do my, uh, what is that from? Ah, uh, okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> inviting you all to take the hashtag May I Love Me challenge. Tweet a positive self-affirmation each day in May and use the hashtag May I Love Me. Obviously, no spaces. So M-A-Y-I-L-O-V-E-M-E. -E -E. And I retweeted her tweet onto my um, timeline. So if it's still May and you're listening to this, then try that out. I love it. So Chris May is Mental Health Month. Christy, Christy, yes. Christy says, I'm giving myself a voice. That means strength, 
question mark? And I'm saying, yes, yes, Christy, that is strength, finding your voice and using your voice and all of this baby steps and huge steps and sometimes just holding our ground, all of that deserves celebration. And this is a journey. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. So um, we're cheering you guys on every step of the way. We are so proud of you. Laura, we are so proud of you. Christy, we are so proud of you. Lindy, Katie, Jack, Matt, Maggie, Allie, August, all of you peeps that are always here. I know I'm leaving people out of Kalisha. You guys, Lucy, Sarah, Jen, Sarah, Jen, all of you, um, uh, circling wagon, Stephanie, <laughs> uh, Kelly, Reveal, Katie, Katie Joy. Um, there's so many. Matt, yeah, Melissa, yep. Bobby. <laughs> We're proud. I'm proud of every single one of you and just think the world of you and your commitment to this community and your encouragement of others. I consider it to be a strength of yours. Just showing up and choosing to be a part of this community, in my opinion, is a strength. You got up out of bed or you're laying in bed and you are here with us and you're showing up. And to me, that is a strength. So um, hopefully maybe you can build upon that and really receive that as sincere and know that we mean that from our hearts. Um, Bobby and I meet off the air and run a business together and starting a nonprofit and we're running this YouTube channel and this Roku channel and setting up this conference and we're, we, we, we talk about you guys <laughs> behind your backs in a good way. We talk about how each and every one of you inspires us to want to, to continue the work that we do. And I just want to say that, I say this every week, but um, you are the reason we show up every week. You are the reason that Mondays are our favorite day of the week. Um, everybody out there, the nine to fivers, the weekend warriors, <laughs> um, everybody complains about Mondays and has a lot of, Monday has a little bit of a bad rap, but Mondays happen to be my favorite day of the week because I get to come and show up and serve this amazing community, not once, but twice on Mondays. And um, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for, um, for, for just showing up. I consider that a strength and you inspire me to want to continue on this journey and not give up. So um, thank you. Uh, right now, uh, we're going to say goodbye to everyone that is normally here every week and who is already plugged into a safe, online, globally accessible, virtual community where you can come and heal with other survivors in safety, free from predators, where there is a zero tolerance policy for all abuse and minimization of any kind. Um, we want to welcome you. We're going to show you some screen shares. It's free. There is no catch. This is not us pitching you on some... Um, bridge in Brooklyn or waterfront property in Nebraska or, <laughs> or anything like that. Like we're not trying to pitch you on anything. We just want to invite you into safety um, and invite you into our safe community of other survivors that value you and that will encourage you and help you to build upon your strengths. So um, aloha to everyone that um, is already plugged in and welcome to those of you uh, who are still looking to get plugged into Safe Community. Bobby has awesome screen share for you right now, and she will share the information that is on it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I love sharing this one because I love that picture. Me too. Okay. These are ways you can get in contact. Whoa, wow. Woo! Not that <laughs> big. Um with um, the lovely Ms. Athena and myself. And the first is how you can contact us via email. And both of us readily admit that sometimes it takes us a while to get back to you. And we appreciate your patience um, because we're doing the best we can to keep up. 
So you can reach me at bobbylparish at gmail.com. Don't forget the L. Um, and Athena can be reached at Athena Moberg speaking at gmail.com. And then we have no more shame project at gmail.com. That is our joint email account. Um, we would love to connect with you on Twitter. I am Bobby L. Parrish. Athena is Athena Moberg. And then Trauma Recovery University has a Twitter account. And that is Trauma Recovery U. Um, capitals don't matter. Capitals don't matter on Twitter. Um, on Facebook, we have our Trauma Recovery University Facebook page. My professional page is Bobby Parrish Coaching and Consulting. My personal page is Bobby Parrish. No L on that one. <laughs> Athena's professional page is Athena Moberg Speaking, and her personal page is Don Athena Moberg. If you'd like to watch our um, replays, all 100 plus hours of content we have for you, it is available on YouTube at Trauma Recovery University, as well as Roku TV and Google Plus at Trauma Recovery University. Every Monday night, you can come here or 24-7-365. You can go to bit.ly at Trauma Recovery U and watch the latest video. So let me move over now to how you can join in with our communities. Yes, and for any of you that are um, confused on how to join our safe communities no need to post nasty 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 mean 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 messages on social media go to the about section of the youtube page go to trauma recovery uh facebook page go to my facebook page go anywhere go to the uh, the about section of the youtube page is the easiest and follow the four steps that bobby is about ready to share with you right now no need to be nasty let's just keep it classy shall we I agree. I'm all for that. Okay. Um, these are the ways that you can join in safe community with us. As Athena mentioned, these are all free, no charge for any of this, and um, never will be a charge for any of this. So let's make it bigger. Ooh, too big. Okay. So we have three Twitter chats a week. The first one is um, on Mondays at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. in the UK. And this was started primarily for our UK audience because it has gotten so large. And that hashtag is CSAQT, which stands for Child Sexual Abuse Question Time. Then the second Twitter chat of the week is what you are participating in right now. It is a combination Twitter chat and video broadcast. The hashtag is no more shame. It is at six o'clock Pacific time, nine Eastern and two o'clock Tuesday morning in the UK. And I think either 10 or 11 AM in Australia. And then Tuesday evening, at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern, Wednesday, 2 o'clock in the morning in the UK, is the original sex abuse chat. That's the hashtag. And um, that all three of these are open to everyone. Um, they are public. We've had several people talk to us about, well, you know, can't we make these private because it's hard to talk about this in public? Nope, because there's no reason for any of us to have any shame. We've done nothing wrong. And we have intentionally set these as public and they will remain public. However, we do respect the fact that some people are not ready to discuss in public um, the fact that they are a sexual abuse survivor. If that's the case, you can still participate on Twitter by making yourself an alias account. Or you can just lurk and then you can join us on Facebook because we have multiple um, private support groups that are secret. So even if someone were to search for them, um, they would not find them. They are secret. You have to be invited into them. And here is how you can get plugged in. The first thing we need you to do is to like the Trauma Recovery University page. Then please send friend requests to both Athena and I. Um, we asked for you to send them to both of us because 
A, we're in two incredibly different time zones. I'm in Dallas, she's in Maui. And B, we have varying schedules. So one of us is going to be able to get to you sooner than the other. After we have accepted your friend request, just one of us, send a message to that one and say, I'd like to heal in safe community. Please don't send a message before we have um, approved your friend request because then that ends up in this awful other folder that we get no notifications about and um, we don't know that you've sent us a message. So wait for us to accept your friend request. Then we will ask you some questions. If we don't already know you from our Twitter community or from interacting with you perhaps at a live event or on Facebook in general, we will ask you some questions about who you are and about your experience as a survivor. We would ask please for your patience with that and not to be offended because we are trying to vet everyone who joins our group because there are predators out there who would love to join our groups and take advantage of our members. The safety of our support group members is of utmost concern to us and we We'll do everything that we can to protect that. So once we have vetted you, then we will welcome you into the support group that we feel is the best fit for you. And then you're off to the races. So that's it. That's the four step process. If you email us and ask to join into um, one of our support groups, if you send us a private message on our business Facebook pages, if you tweet us or direct message us on Twitter, it will not be as easy. It will not happen as quickly. In fact, we may even miss your message. We have this process, this four-step process set up so that we don't miss your messages. Um, so we'd ask that if you would like the process to be smooth and swift, that you follow this process. And like Athena said, if you choose one of the other ways and we don't get back to you right away, um, please don't get upset with us. <laughs> we're doing the best we can here, people. So. Yeah, we're, we're doing the best we can. I know that um, it is difficult to, to conceive that we are two humans. <laughs> and that there are thousands of you out there in over 60 countries that will at one point or another watch, tweet, like, message, or email, or contact us in some way. And that that is, that is, that is beyond grasping sometimes. So we're sharing with you that that's the reality. We're two girls. And we ha now have an amazing volunteer coordinator named Rachel, and she is lovely. And we and I have uh, I have created a new group for all the men, the male survivors out there, um, a co-ed group where we can all be together and heal in safety together. Um, but things take time. Anything worth having takes time. Um, anything that is uh, worth anything takes time. So um, that being said, it takes time for us to respond to you. And we don't want to flippantly respond um, with just a couple words or with an, with an uh, emoji or something. Um, you've taken the time to draft us an email or a DM or a tweet or a private message or a speak pipe message or a YouTube comment and we're doing the very best we can to keep up with the volume of people. Um, I mentioned this last week and I'll close with this and say goodbye with this. Um, I've done the math, I've done the research. I was I was in Columbus. I was in Columbus um, at a mastermind event for um, the YouTube community, uh, leaders in the YouTube community. And the presentation I gave, I presented in front of 12 to 14, I can't remember the exact number, business owners that are interested in sharing their business and um, their vision with on YouTube, using YouTube for their business. 
And at the time, the numbers that I had calculated and the research I had done and the discussions I had had with Bobby, I thought I was dreaming as big as possible and that I would go there and present this big, big, big dream to this mastermind in Columbus. And I reached as far as I could fathom and, and talked about one million survivors globally. One million. Grasp that for a second. We're two girls. Okay? One million survivors that will be sexually abused or have been sexually abused prior to their 18th birthday globally. After further calculation and further research, I have, I have uh, been corrected by myself and by my math. And the global population currently present day during the recording of this live stream is between 7.4 and 7.6 billion, give or take 200,000. And conservatively, that number is one, bil one billion with a B, one billion survivors globally that either have been or will be sexually abused before their 18th birthday. And we are two girls just wanting to make a difference and provide globally accessible safe communities for you, the survivor, to come heal in safety away from predators in an environment with other survivors who will never judge you with a zero tolerance policy for abuse and minimization of any kind. So wrap your head around that and please keep it classy when you decide to leave us messages or get angry with us because I promise you, promise you, promise you that this is my life's work and Bobby and I are a thousand percent dedicated to you, the survivor community, and we're doing the very best we can. And we, you have our commitment that we'll continue to do the very best we can. We don't just decide to like take days off and go, you know, sip tea and prop our feet up and just forget about everybody. Like I don't, I, I would like to say that I take excellent self care in that way, but I just don't. And I want to. I want to get to a place where we have enough help to where we can take a day off every now and then. Um, it's not about us. It's not about Bobby and it's not about me. It's about you. You, the survivor community. We're here for you and we want to build something bigger than ourselves that will reach farther than we could ever reach, just the two of us, and will last longer than we will ever last for generations to come. So your patience is appreciated. Your participation is appreciated. Your kindness is appreciated when you consider corresponding with us. Bobby, did you want to um, say anything or tag on any of that that I just that I just shared? <laughs> um, I took my first day off last week in 18 months, so um, yeah, we're working hard. We're doing our best, um, and hopefully, sometime soon we'll have the chance to take more than one day off every 18 months. Yeah, so I lo we love the work we do, though, right? So like, it doesn't yes. feel like work, but like, I can't really remember a day that I just didn't have my computer on and I didn't check in with our survivor community since January of 2014. I think this has just been a passion and a goal and an, a joy of mine. I mean, I was in like, like Bobby told you guys before, like. I was in the hospital with my dad on life support and I was like tweeting our peeps, like letting them know what was going on. And like, you know, I mean, it's just, this is, this is a passion and a love of ours and we need to walk our talk and model good self care. So Bobby did take that day off. I would like for her to take more days off and I would like to not check my phone or my computer at all. Like one day a week. It would be awesome to like, that's a huge goal though. Like one day a week is a lot. So maybe like one day a month, like I, that's my goal right now. So Bobby, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think about that? That would be great. Hopefully when we have more volunteers in place, that will be a reality of one day a week. Yeah. So, well, um, this is Bobby Parrish and I'm Athena Moberg. Thank you for being here with us. You guys are amazing. You inspire us. Uh, we love to bring you everything you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up. Please share it with someone you know that needs to know they're not alone and they need a message of hope and healing if they are a survivor. 
And we will see you next week. Bobby, did you want to share the topic for next week? Yes, yes. Common misdiagnoses among survivors of childhood abuse. So we're going to tackle those things that we unfortunately as survivors often get misdiagnosed as having things like borderline um, personality disorder, bipolar disorder, ADD, ADHD, um, all of those things and why that happens and what you can do if you are misdiagnosed. There you go. Yeah. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you, Bobby, for that. And thank you, each and every one of you, for showing up. We appreciate you. And we will see you next week or in one of our private secret Facebook groups. If you're not plugged in, send us a message. Follow the four-step process in the About section of our YouTube channel. Um, but we'll see you next week on the topic of common misdiagnoses for adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse. Bye, everybody. <laughs>